Hi Booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing okay. Recently I finished reading In Search of Lost Time or uh, Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. Um, I was reading the, um, the Moncrief edition, so it was rendered as uh, Remembrance of Things Past here. Um, but uh, I thought I'd make a, a video about um, just whether Proust is actually actually worth it um yeah because i've been going through as i've been reading it uh, just trying to share a little of my experience i'm not sure how well i did but i just wanted to keep some kind of log of what it was like spending so much time with this book and i thought now that i've finished it i would make a video about whether uh, Proust is worth it. Um, it, it seems like the, the thing that I like to do whenever I finish a book that's so big and, and monumental is to kind of wrestle with the question of whether that book was worth the time and the uh, the energy and the attention that I gave it. And it's, instead of, because I, I, I could, I suppose, uh, just spit uh, superlatives at you because I, I do think it was worth it. I, I thoroughly uh, enjoyed my experience with the book. Um, but instead, I, I, I thought I would just go into three sort of things to consider. Three things that, uh, well, the, the first two are things that probably most people, even before they've started reading the book, will, 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 will think that you know, th these things are going to sort of get in the way of me enjoying it or that they're just total hindrances um, and I'm <laughs> just not going to enjoy it. Um, and then the third is something that um, was a bit more personal and it was the thing that for me um, got in the way the first time I tried to read it. Um, and the, the the first one is the, the really, really obvious one, <laughs> which is uh, the length. So in my edition, it was actually split into three uh, volumes. So you had, uh, in, in, in the first two, you had two of Proust's volumes per volume, if that makes sense. And then the last three of Proust's volumes are in the last one. Um, but it's a big, you know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a lot of novel. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's over 3,000 pages, maybe up to 3,500 pages in in this edition and the font is pretty small um, and it's not it's actually not awful um, but it's not it's not the largest font um, and it took me um, 15 months I think to read this I think I started in yeah in, in I think in May uh, 2022 um, I think I only really seriously got into it in, in June, but I think officially I started in May 2022, if I'm remembering correctly, um, and I just finished it now in August, so that's, you know, so roughly speaking, 15 months, um, so <laughs> almost, I suppose, a year and a quarter. Um, a lot of people managed to read it in a year, um, and even when reading it like that, they're probably reading about 10 pages a day, something like that so it's very slow going um so yeah it is it's big <laughs> and that's that's not necessarily something um you know to, to take lightly it's a big commitment of um your attention your time your, your energy um, and also that i think the style as well um, and this is actually one that didn't trouble me nearly as much um and I think like people just expect the style to be really, really hard. Um, that they'll sort of go on about the, the really, really long sentences. And, and there are some very long sentences in, in Proust. Although apparently there is a sentence in there that goes on for pages. Um, and by the time I'd gotten to it, I, I'd gotten so used to the style that I didn't even notice that I was reading a sentence that was going on for pages. Um, and so I, I don't think it's quite that, that bad. I think really the, the thing with the style is that it's it's kind of incredibly 
uh, conversational, but it's only one side of the conversation. It's just Proust going on and on and on. Um, I think I, I sort of described it as a wave, so every unit of thought kind of stretches and um, there are constant meanders and diversions, and so it kind of goes beyond what he's initially uh, talking about. And then it kind of goes back, uh, might even roll back you know, sort of further than it needs to, and then it'll carry on going. Sometimes those waves are a couple of pages, sometimes they're 10 pages, sometimes they're like 100 pages. <laughs> so it's um, it's just something you kind of get used to, and you, st and you start to feel the jolt of when he's sort of started again, and, and the wave is about to start rolling again. So... Um, yeah, the style is not as difficult. It's definitely not dense. It's, I think it's the opposite, really. It's, um, it's just kind of overflowing, and um, it's it's not all over the place because it is it is controlled, um, but it, it is just very meandering. So it's, again, something to consider, but something that at least for me, I didn't find that particularly difficult. Um, the the language in this translation that I was reading. Is fairly flowery, um, but it's kind of describing um, some late nineteenth century Paris for, for a lot of the books. So that the fact that the language is is flowery, you know, I, I can't read the original French, so it kind of made sense. Um, and so those the, those first two things are definitely things that might daunt readers when they get into it. Um, but for me, I, I didn't mind them at all too much, and. Definitely the, the, the style and just the fact that this book is so big and immersive, they began to feel very, very comforting the further into it. I got, um, I think I kept saying as I was reading it in, in the Proust vlog videos and probably in my wrap up videos as well, um, that it just felt like I was um, just spending time with a friend and I just enjoyed hearing what he had to say. and I enjoyed the way um, he had to say it. Um, and again, I think you have to be in a certain uh, kind of headspace uh, to <laughs> kind of be okay with that and have uh, the patience for that. Um, and, and so it's just something to bear in mind for, for me. It, it definitely didn't get in the way of the fact that it was so conversational and um, it just keeps rolling on and on and on. The, the third thing, and this was the, this was the big thing for me, is, is really the characters. Um, and so the, the first time I tried to read Proust um, was, it was a, a few years ago, and um, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember exactly why I decided to try reading Proust. And I think it, it might have just been that he'd just come up in some like essays and articles and things that I've been reading in uni on reading and, and writing and books that have made a big impact and things like that, that, um, yeah, loads of writers were just saying how they really enjoyed spending time with Proust, they relished his, his sentences and all, all of those kind of things. And so I had nothing, <laughs> I had no idea what this book was actually about. And I just thought, well, it sounds, it sounds like a writer who's going to be fun and I'm going to want to spend time with. So I, I thought I'd, I'd give it a go and I picked up a copy of of, uh, of Swan's Way and I read it and there there were elements that I liked but ultimately, um, yeah, I, I didn't particularly like it. I uh, felt a little like I was wasting my time and the thing that infuriated me the most, it wasn't the style, it wasn't the fact that there were going to be six more volumes of this. Um, it was it was really just the characters. And I found them incredibly, um, incredibly shallow and superficial. And they didn't treat each other right. And they, uh, <laughs> they just didn't know what was good for themselves uh, either. They were just kind of torturing themselves. Um, and... The first time through, I just found that incredibly annoying, um, and so I just decided to put the book down. And at that point, it was for me it was a total DNF, and I had no interest in trying to read Proust again. Um, but then I, I left it a few years, and and in the intervening years, 
um, he just kept on coming up again and again and again. Um, and I think the thing that clinched it for me was, um, I, th I think it was just, just around the time, maybe about a year before I started reading Proust. And if I find it, um, it's, I think it was The Hair with, with Amber Eyes by Edmund Duval. Um, and they're, they're just, because this whole book is about memory, um, he invokes Proust, but also it, it seems like some of his family members had um, like a personal uh, connection to Proust as well. Um, and the, um, the epigraph to the memoir is, um, is something that Charles Swan says in uh, Cities of the Plain. Um, and he says, even when one is no longer attached to things, it's still something to have been attached to them because it was always for reasons which other people didn't grasp. Well, now that I am a little too weary to live with other people, these old feelings, so personal and individual, that I had in the past, seem to me, it's the mania of all collectors, very precious. I open my heart to myself like a sort of vitrine, and examine, one by one, all those love affairs of which the world can know nothing. And of this collection, to which I am now much more attached than to my others, I say to myself, rather as Mazarin said of his books, but in fact without the least distress, that it would that it will be very tiresome to have to leave it all. Um, and I, <laughs> I just loved that. I thought that was so profound. And that was just the epigraph to this book. And then I went on and read the book, um, and I, I wanted more of of that of 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 people just really re reflecting on life and, and what it is to live and you know your your experiences your your love your um just just everything that's happened to you being a, a collection that you know later in life you're just going to be a, a examining and for, for, for any faults for any um heartache it might have caused you in the past uh, at that point you you, you cherish it um because it's just become that collection um and, and so I decided to pick it back up and I, I realised that actually the, the, these characters who are definitely annoying, they're definitely superficial, they're definitely shallow, um, ultimately they're actually a lot of fun um, and I don't think you're supposed to take them all that seriously um, and actually their, their shallowness and how horrible they, they are to each other is kind of the point. Um, and so, it, again, it's something to bear in mind that uh, <laughs> these people aren't always particularly good role models. Um, I think either the, the, the reflections that uh, the narrator eventually makes on them or the reflections that they ultimately have themselves kind of make it worth it. Um, but yeah, that definitely the way characters treat each other um, it's not that great. Proust has a very, um, quite a dark view of human uh, relationships, of romantic and sexual relationships, um, and I don't think there's a healthy one at all uh, in here. Everyone's either jealous or giving people reasons <laughs> to be jealous, um, and the, the narrator and the, the Proust character himself isn't excluded from that. He's maybe one of the worst. Uh, so um, again, it's, it's something that might be infuriating. Um, but again, if you, I think if you take just a little step back and don't take it as much to heart and you can see sometimes it's quite comic, sometimes you have to be critical and that's that's totally fine. I think Proust is open, opening you up to be critical of his characters. Um, but also ultimately he's opening it up for you to be critical of yourself and to be appreciative of yourself as well um, which is kind of the last thing and this is maybe the only superlative that I have is, is that it is a book that it does just get you thinking about your own life, your own experience, uh, the way you see things, the way you treat other people 
And I think because as characters are experiencing things, the way Proust manages to put it, sometimes it does feel like it's actually happening to you. And then as he's later reflecting on it and saying, oh, it's all okay, <laughs> it's exactly what you need because you don't need to be told that it's all okay. And in, in a way that's kind of manipulative, um, but it's also very comforting because actually um, you know, some of the things, some of the, the heartache and the, um, and the d- distress and the, um, these kind of really burgeoning uh, feelings are things that we t- do feel in, in our lives and it's, it's quite good to um, have someone saying that it's all okay. Um, and kind of on, on that note of reflecting on our own lives, I'll, I'll finish with a, a little quotation from the last volume. Um, and it's the narrator uh, who's decided that they're going to write a book, or that he's going to write a book, um, is, is trying to work out what kind of book it's going to be. And here he's kind of deciding uh, what the kind of core of the book is, really. So he's saying, um, I thought more modestly of my book, and it would be inaccurate even to say that I thought of those who would read it as my readers. For it seemed to me that they would not be my readers, but the readers of their own selves, my book being merely a sort of magnifying glass, like those which the optician at Cambrai used to offer up to his customers. It would be my book, um, but with its help, I would furnish them with the means of reading what lay inside themselves, so that I should not ask them to praise um, or uh, censure, uh, but simply to tell whether it really is like that. Sorry, I kind of butchered it because I had it, <laughs> had it noted down. Uh, my, my handwriting is not the best, but I hope you kind of got got, got the point that, yeah, the, the book being a kind of a magnifying glass um, to help us see our own lives better um, and um, he's kind of constantly asking us is it like that or is it like this um, and again maybe you might find that a little intrusive or a little pretentious or you know who is who is Proust to be asking me whether this is like my life um, but for me I, I thought that was incredibly comforting and I, I think he's opening a window onto what many of the, the best novels are like and what they do. So there we go, that's kind of my offering on, on the question of whether Proust is, is worth it or not. Um, again, I think he is, I think he's, he's worth uh, this big pile. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's it's not um, it's definitely not a, an easy book, and it's not um, you know it, it's it's a commitment, so it's it's not exactly um, you know it's not going to be over in a breeze. Um, so I, I thought I'd make this more as um, a, a way for you to ask the question yourself if you've been thinking of reading it or if you've started it and you're not sure if you want to keep on going, um, and just to be you know honest about whether you think uh, it's it, it's worth it whether this big book is really worth reading so there we go that's that's all i have to say um about proust for the time being um, i'm going to be giving proust probably a bit of a break i might read some books about proust but i won't be reading uh, in search of lost time for a, a little while um so um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think I'll be okay. So anyway, um, thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you soon.